Hey guys, welcome to a bit of a Unity showcase video today. Now, I don't usually do things like this, but I thought I'll make an exception because this is a really good asset for I don't know how many people who make horror games or anything like that. And I wish I'd have had something like this when I started um, making Left Alone if you've seen anything on that game. Now, um, this is an asset by John's Art on the Unity Asset Store. I'll put some links in the description, but um, here to just give it a shout out because I think that it's possibly one of the best assets that I've seen on the store and it's called the horror development kit now you might think how does it really set itself aside against other things of similar ilk let's say but really it comes down to being a system with pretty much absolutely everything that you'd want from you know conventional horror games that you see um, these days I'll give a, a quick demo of the things that you will find in the um, um, asset, but without a doubt it's got the best array of features that you've ever seen for getting started with a horror game So you've really got a good head start. It comes with a you know a great raker system with various optimizations in the code um, a Crosshair, it's got a little stamina meter. You can peek use doors. It's got flashlight You can use a camera similar to outlast. It's got areas where you can easily add jump scares it's got um, dynamic lights, turning lights on and off, examining items, and it's fully documented and ready to use in 5.4 and above, and possibly earlier versions, but you might need to message the uh, developer about that if you're interested. So for the $45 asking price, depending on what currency is, it's really a drop in the ocean for what you get. So what you can do is when you bring the... Um, horror development kit into unity when you've imported it in from the asset store you can run the actual just the scenes and you can either go from the menu because it includes a menu or you can run the sandbox version which will show everything in the asset pack together and you could even use this as say a base to whatever you want to do hopefully that the volume of the game audio won't overpower um, the voiceover um, but when we drop in, I'll have footsteps and all things like that, and I'll give you a quick rundown of what we're going to be seeing. So first of all, we get in here, we've got the crosshair like we'd expect. We've got a character controller, which is a little bit more interesting than you would just see the default Unity FPS controller, because when you move, it'll have a slight sway and a wobble to make it feel more realistic. When you decide to sprint, you have that wobble again and you get the fading bar which I think is quite nice and you could probably position that lower down if you didn't want it there we've got an, a little FPS counter which you could potentially get rid of but good for testing to see what you're going for um, when you go towards different things you can set things up like reading paper and you get little notifications on the right hand side for examining and interacting now there's two different types when you interact you can left click and it'll just fade in a nice um, you know, it could be notes, pieces of paper, anything that you need to happen, it could be pictures, and it'll just show them nicely. There's uh, things for interacting with keys, picking up a camera, and a flashlight. What we can actually do is say I use this camera as an example. As long as it's an examinable object, we can right click on it, and we'll be able to rotate the camera around so we can look at the object, which is quite popular in a lot of new horror games, and you can right click to put it down we can left click again pick it up we can pick up the key and we can also pick up the flashlight now the flashlight has an animation for turning it off putting it away and pulling it out again which is quite nice because you don't see that a lot of times similarly with the flashlights you can right click examine left click to scrub around it you can put it back down with a right click and you can left click to pick up and we have another animation with the opposite arm to show you picking something up we can press F to get rid of the flashlight again if we don't want it. Similar with this table which is just about object interaction. So you can't actually interact with it, i.e. picking it up and putting it into an inventory. But you can right click and just examine the object as you might want. Just similar with the pictures. We get a nice rotation. All things like that, really good. We can switch lights on and off. And these two are flickering lights. And we've got just functional normal lights, which we can turn on and off. We've got um, chests of drawers, which we can left click and we get an animation and drawers will open and close. You know, you've got little uh, tooltip uh, UIs to say whether it's jammed. You might need a key or you might be able to open it and then you might be able to find things inside. 
we've got normal flickering lights, we've got a selection of doors, which is a jammed door. When you um, left click, it'll say it's jammed. We'll have a door which is locked, and I opened it because I had a key. And just normal doors that everything has a, an interaction to highlight to show um, that what we're doing. And similarly, how I said before, with like with a note, we can get something to pop up on the screen and these things nicely fade in and out to make it sure that it isn't abrupt. We've got different footsteps so you can add your, um, add your own audio for um, dirt, wood, concrete, whatever you need to do and it'll affect it when sprinting and walking. We've got a few different things. We've got a 2D jump scare which will be a picture in front of the character. Um, a sound jump scare which will just be a jump scare. I'm not going to play those because it might just blast your ear drums out and it not be very good. We've got another thing that we can use is, like I said in Outlast, you can press C and you can bring out a camera and you can right click and you get a zoom with uh, the audio and you can go in and you can see that the cave, um, when you walk into this collision you get a broken camera effect, say you've been hit, say you've fallen down, something's broken but you still need to use it as part of your game. Press C again to actually get rid of it and over time it'll get rid of it, we can walk towards the animated jump scare and we'll get something that's just, you know, um, one of those sort of basic jump scares where you see something fly past and you get a piece of audio. But like I said, this is just, this is um, an, a base to be able to create a fully fledged horror game with ease, with all the interaction that you could possibly ask for and it comes with its own inventory if we press I you can see what we've collected in the bottom corner so we have a battery we have a um, flashlight and we have a camera and like with many of if you've ever bought an asset make sure that if you have any problems you check the documentation you can send um, emails to the developer and if you've got any ideas or things that you might want to include in the future or you feel that this um, pack could um, you know, benefit from, uh, send him a little message and I'm sure that he'd be happy to take any suggestions that you might have. So that was just a quick rundown of everything that you might find for your own horror game. So I can't recommend this enough and it's a great thing to get you started on your own horror game for really a small price for the amount of quality programming that's in it. So again, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.